Hello. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are completely happy with the experience that your APIs deliver to your consumers? Or if you're consumers yourselves, how many APIs have you come across lately that truly met all your expectations? Research shows that usability is the main reason why consumers will choose one API over another. And yet, it seems we keep spending more time thinking about the next big thing, about the next cool API that will help us gain competitive advantage, instead of making sure that our current APIs do deliver the best experience. The truth is, getting developer experience right can be really hard. And so for the next minutes, I will be sharing a secret that can help you get there, and that is user's feedback. My name is Maria Garcia. I lead the strategy for the program Amadeus for Developers, and I'll be sharing some of the key learnings of Amadeus' transformational journey over the last year to open some of our APIs and deliver a better developer experience. As you may imagine, for a company that has been exposing its APIs for over two decades, opening suddenly our doors to any developer and launching this kind of program that was completely open meant a really big mindset shift. But more than anything, it fundamentally changed the way we used to think about uh, API design. Because suddenly, we had the need to meet the expectations of this whole new spectrum of customers that we didn't really know about so much with completely different profiles and completely different needs. And so throughout the different phases of this journey that we went through, we explored multiple tactics to get to know them better and to integrate their feedback back into our products. I'll share some of the lessons learned, what worked well, what didn't work so well. Um, so hopefully, you can apply some of these key learnings uh, to your API programs. But perhaps the first question that comes to your mind is, why should I even care about feedback, right? Um, I got this question asked many times when we were studying the program, because some people would challenge why we would care about design or usability so much if this was, and I quote their words, just a product for developers. Now, uh, knowing the audience, I hope I truly don't, break, like, don't bring like breaking news here, but um, developers are also humans. And they do not want to spend their time just trying to figure out what you meant in your documentation or debugging code just because your endpoints were too hard to use. So if you manage to deliver that simple API that can help them solve their, solve their problem quickly and move to the next thing, they will just love you for it. And to get to that point, feedback is indeed instrumental. In fact, there are many reasons why you should care about it. And the first one is that it helps you find the blind spots that you may be missing. Because let's face it, the longer you stare at your own code, the more you may start to think that it's OK, you know, it's not that hard to understand. But it's by going out of the building and seeing how other people really look at your stuff how you can identify those errors and those areas for improvements that you may be missing. Moreover, it helps you build your product roadmap. Um, if you're currently managing APIs at your organization, we probably share the same challenge, which is a wish list of improvements, um, potential ideas for new releases that may seem sometimes like never ending, right? Um, so think about how today you guess what to prioritize. And sometimes even more important at large organizations, how do you persuade other stakeholders who have different priorities? By understanding the needs of your customers is how you can really build a list of priorities that instead of just following our gut feeling is based on real evidence. But taking it one step further, um, users' feedback in the case of APIs can be also very important to validate your business model. I don't know if you have found this a struggle yourselves, but I always thought that it was kind of hard to define the pricing for APIs. Among other things, because there seems to be a um, general lack of transparency in the industry. So how do you know how much your consumers are willing to pay for your APIs? Or should you just have a standard business model or offer more flexible options to cater the needs of the, your different customers? 
Well, by understanding the kind of business that they are building on top of your APIs and the needs of their end users, you will be in a much better position to understand what they really need from you, as well as, hopefully, um, identify new monetization opportunities. And last but not least, and this one is very important, it helps you build a sense of community. Um, sometimes people seem to be reluctant to ask for feedback to their customers because they feel that that kind of implies acknowledging that their products are not perfect. Well, the thing is, if you ask your customers what they think and you act in that feedback, that is how you show that you listen and that you care. And in the case of the APIs, um, actually, by doing so, you can start to turn your most active users into your better uh, community champions. So now that we know um, why we should care about feedback, let's see how you can collect it in each one of the phases of your own API journey. And no matter if you're starting your API program from scratch right now, or you're just kind of redefining your strategy, your best first step is always to talk to either current customers or potential customers. I know this may sound simple, but um, user interviews are really a good way, a very powerful way to get to know more about the real needs, the real frustrations, and their pain points. And so when we started this program, uh, the first thing that we did was to spend some time performing one-on-one -on -one interviews with both customers of other Amadeus APIs, the enterprise version that we already had, and individuals who had never been exposed to our products, but whose, tar whose profile was very similar to the new customer segments that we were targeting. What's interesting is that by doing so, we were able to identify some common needs and common pain points across absolutely all the different segments. And that is what helped us get guidance before jumping into the next phase of API design. And the best part is that actually this is something that you can do at any stage of your journey. It's quite cheap, it's easy, and all it takes is really to have a list of questions and you know, find 30 minutes to pick up a phone. Now, once you have validated your idea, Prototyping can help you move from concept to reality and make sure you build the right foundations for your API even before uh, you build your backend. And this is critical because if you're able to find the issues at this stage, it will be much cheaper and much easier to solve it than once you have uh, written your code. There are many ways you can go about prototyping. Uh, so you can use, for example, Postman or Prism from Stoplight, and you can create a, mo an, a, a mock server. Um, so uh, that will re return the design, response, the design example as a response. Just keep in mind, though, that if you create a prototype, you will need to provide clear documentation and some robust mock data, because developers need to get a good sense of how the API will behave in a real development environment. Once you have that prototype, you're ready to perform your first usability tests. And my advice would be, if you can only pick one method to collect feedback, this is probably your best choice. Usability testing allows you to uh, see how users behave, how they interact with their products, and what are the main problems that they encounter. Um, so basically, the, the way to do it is you will give a series of realistic programming tasks to developers to be completed by using the API that you want to test. You will ask them to think aloud, so that way, uh, while they're performing the task, so you can observe their reactions, listen to their thoughts, and take notes. And you will want to repeat this, pro this process with at least five developers for each test. So uh, that way, you can identify the most common issues and prioritize them. There's another tactic that you may want to try at this stage of your journey, which is using index cards uh, because that helps with taxonomies. So the idea is very simple. You just have to write down some words in some cards, pass them to developers, and ask them to either explain what that concept means to them or uh, organize the cards following the logic that makes more sense to them. In fact, just to give you an example, let's try to do a very quick experiment all together right now. So uh, just take a moment and think, what is the first idea that comes to your mind when you see the words open API? I don't know if any of these words 
were the ones that you had in mind. But the reason why I'm asking this is because when we were starting this program, we were looking for a way to name our new public APIs and differentiate them from the enterprise version. And in our minds, we thought that open was kind of a self-explanatory name. As for us, it meant publicly available. Well, it turns out that we performed this test, and we found out that more than 90% of the potential users that we interviewed uh, understood that open meant free of charge. So we had a problem there, right? So uh, luckily, because we performed this test, we were able to tweak our approach. We renamed the APIs to self-service. and We avoided some potential frustrations and misunderstandings uh, down the road. And there are many more things that you could do at this stage. Um, the key point is when you think about feedback, your only option is not your external uh, consumer. So you may have many other options available as well. Think, for example, about all those developers and product experts at your organization who are not involved in your project, so they are not biased, who could give your APIs a try. Um, are you using collaborative tools? Because if that's the case, you can very easily share the prototype and encourage them to just add their comments and their feedback to it. Then, uh, do you have an API design governance set up at your organization? If you don't, this is maybe something you want to consider. Um, for example, at Aramareus, we have a community of experts from different departments uh, that are in charge of defining our common vision for API design. So basically, every time we're planning to release a new API, they will review it in detail, and they will provide a series of guidelines and recommendations for improvements. And then, well, just take a moment to take a look around you right now in this room. Because uh, chances are that the people that are sitting next to you have gone through some of the same experiences that you have gone through right now. So just talk to them. Um, when we have the next break, ask them about their experience. You can also think about other types of external experts. So in our case, at the beginning, we work uh, with an agency specialized in developer relations. They reviewed both the APIs and the portal and provided very, very valuable feedback uh, for both of them. So we're kind of halfway through this journey, right? And so, so far, we have been able uh, to validate our concept before writing a single line of code. Uh, we have been able to build a prototype as well as to iterate on the documentation. And so it seems that now we're ready to hit production, right? That will be kind of the logical step. Um, but it seems that everything I've been telling you so far have been kind of unicorns and rainbows. So I would like to take the chance to tell you about a time when we totally failed in our approach of collecting uh, customers' feedback. So hopefully that can work as a cautionary tale for you as well. Beta testing, uh, to start with, is, in my opinion, one of the best ways you have to make sure your APIs are fully ready before you release them to the entire outside world. Think that, for the first time, developers will be using your APIs to build uh, production-ready applications. And so the level of detail of their review uh, will go in much more depth. They will be able to identify, uh, for example, inconsistencies in your documentation, uh, issues with authentication or with uh, API performance that you will not be able to identify with just a prototype. There are many ways to do this, uh, but the best practice is to provide access to a limited audience for a limited time range. And you could think about working with developers that were involved in the previous phases, or for example, with customers who have expressed an interest on this type of service already. Otherwise, you can, for example, create a public form, so you just, you know, you just allow people to sign up as volunteers. In our case, and this is what I was saying that we didn't do so well, uh, we got all caught up when we were um, in this idea, and this exciting idea, when we were getting ready for the program launch, uh, about creating what we call a beta testers community. So in our minds, um, the idea was to have this permanent pool of developers who would always get early access to any new API that we were planning to release, as well as other benefits. And so we were very excited about it. Uh, we launched our communications. We got the first excited replies just to find out later that actually we did not have the technical means to provide that early secure access that we have promised. 
And that back then, in the team, we did not have the bandwidth to really grow and nurture this kind of uh, community. And so eventually, we had to cancel the initiative. Um, one year later, we are now in a better position to define our community strategy, just one, one step at a time. Uh, but my key takeaways are, uh, first, do not underestimate the efforts required for building this kind of community around your APIs. And second, always make sure that you have the technical means to deliver, obviously, on what you promise to, to your consumers. And once you have gone through the beta testing and you release your APIs, there are many mechanisms that you can put in place just to make sure that you keep receiving feedback in a regular basis. I'm just going to mention very briefly some of the ones that we use. Um, so we have surveys. I'm not personally a big fan of those, but if at some point you need a high volume of replies in a short period of time, this may be something that you want to consider. Then uh, there are also feedback plugins that you can implement very easily in your developer platform. And this will allow developers just to kind of easily take a screenshot of whatever issue they, ident they identify in any page and very easily send it to you. Uh, now, I understand every experience is completely different, uh, but in our case, we actually tested this. And I have to say that we saw that the volume of uh, usage was quite, lower, quite low compared to other um, support channels, which takes me to the next point, which is, according to research, 75% of your users will be willing to report any uh, issue they see with the APIs that impact either the quality or their performance. That is why it's really, really critical that you make sure you keep some sort of communication channels open. Uh, in our case, as I'm sure uh, many people in this room, uh, we mostly rely on Stack Overflow. and We have a contact form implemented in the platform. Uh, but just a word of advice, though, uh, if you're using many different channels, just make sure you define clear processes to compile the feedback coming from all those channels, because otherwise, at some point, it might get a bit overwhelming and uh, hard to manage. And then, obviously, last but not least, uh, analytics will be able to provide you real-time visibility on everything that happens in your API ecosystem. So obviously, do not forget about keeping track of those. And I have saved uh, my favorite one for the last one, uh, because this has been very present in our strategy from the beginning. Although I know there are many divided opinions in terms of the return of investment of hackathons. One year ago, when we were getting ready to launch our program and our new self-service APIs were kind of fresh from the oven, uh, our team decided to travel to Dallas to support a hackathon with more than 1,200 developers. It was the first time we were testing end-to-end -end absolutely everything, the portal and the APIs. And we just decided to go big because, you know, what can go wrong in this kind of situation, right? Um, the point is, hackathons have become indeed kind of a buzzword in the last years. But uh, I truly believe that if you define the right objectives and the right expectations, and this is very important, you can extract much value from these kind of events, be it in terms of branding, recruitment, or promoting innovation at your organization. And the point that I want to highlight is that actually hackathons also provide a great context to make sure you can compile meaningful feedback if you set the right mechanisms in place. In our team, since we launched uh, for the last year, we have either organized or supported more than 15 hackathons. And so we have sort of industrialized the way that we are collecting feedback at these events. Among other things, we do the following. First, direct observation. It may sound simple. But hackathons provide a great uh, contest in which you can see developers reacting uh, the first time they're exposing to your APIs. So just walk around, look at their reactions, see what kind of problems they, they find at the beginning, because that will be very helpful. Then uh, support questions. If you are proactive, if your developer relations team is moving around and walking to, uh, talking to all the teams, you will get lots of those. So uh, just make sure you write everything down and you take the chance to discuss it later with your team. There's something else you can try. Uh, we actually like this one very much. It's something we did in one of our first hackathons. We organized a challenge that we call a bank hunter game. So in the context of the hackathon, we ask all teams 
to report any issue they will find or any potential area for improvement with the portal or with the APIs. And by introducing this gamification uh, element, because they were competing for a prize, teams were really uh, engaged, and they reported a lot of things. So in one single event, we were able to identify more than 25 areas for improvement for the portal and for the APIs. Then something else that we do is, uh, once the teams have already pitched and the jury is deliberating, um, they're kind of more relaxed. Uh, we have the developer relations team that has a series of very short informal interviews with each one of the teams separately, so we can get their impressions and collect their feedback. And similarly, we sometimes use surveys, um, so they can provide in an anonymous way feedback about the portal, about the APIs, and about the event itself. Something also that is um, interesting is that thanks to our API management platform, APG, we have full visibility of everything that happens during the event in terms of API usage and API performance. So that is also something that you will want to look into after the event. And uh, the last point is actually your relationship with these hackers doesn't have to end the moment you announce the winners. So uh, we usually organize follow-up calls with some of the teams. Uh, we offer them to publish an article, for example, about their idea in our blog, and we find different areas for collaboration with them. And usually it's during these kind of follow-up conversations that we get even more valuable insights from them. Well, with this, we are reaching the end of this kind of quick journey through all the different stages together. But I truly hope that for you, this is more like the beginning of a new journey. Because as it happens with any kind of design, API design happens in iterations. And so as you go through each one of this, these phases in a repeated way, you can keep trying more tactics and see what works and what doesn't work for you. Uh, in our case, we're still going through this learning process, and so if you have any recommendations, any experiences to share, or any questions, uh, we will be around, and I will be more than happy to have a conversation about it. And last but not least, before we leave, if I can encourage you to get a single takeaway from today's presentation, this is it. Just keep listening to your consumers at all stages of your API journey. Just keep looking for better ways to solve the real pain points and keep aiming to deliver the best developer experience. Thank you. <laughs>